Whether you are 20-something or 60-something, the sting of divorce has no age. And here to help you fight that post-marital pain is HuffPost divorce columnist and freelance writer Jen Nagy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, thank you for being brave enough to share your story. I know that that's not easy. Um, but as we mentioned, it's therapeutic. It yes. helped you move on and became the person you are today, now having your own column, which is really exciting. Um, and hopefully we can, uh, we'll put that information up on our website so people can follow you. Because exactly. I want everyone to read your stuff. That I did. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, in a relationship, whether it's been two years to 20 to 50 years, right. in your experience, when do we know it's the breaking point? It's right. time for me to make that huge leap of saying to my partner, I think we should get a divorce. Well, I think that definitely varies depending on the person and the situation. Um, if I had to generalize, though, the time that you know that you should leave is when you've tried everything else and it hasn't worked. Um, so I think if you're contemplating getting a divorce, it's important to actually sit down and think about what the specific problems that you're having are and the reasons for the divorce. Yeah. Um, and then think about all the possible solutions you could have. So, for example, if you're just not getting along, um, it could be trying couples counseling. Mm -hmm. It could be sitting down and discussing the specific problems that you're having and seeing if you can come up with solutions and strategies to address it without having to go to getting a divorce. Right. Um, so in general, I think that the more steps that you can take in order to prevent yourself from getting that divorce, try everything first, um, then that's better. But um, if you hit that point that you feel there's an absolutely nothing left to do and you know that you will be happier, healthier, better um, on your own, and of course, knowing that this is a very difficult situation you will then have to support yourself right the, so finances come into it children um, children come into it, all of those things enough to not have to deal with yeah absolutely that does make it easier um so then if you hit that point then i think that that's exactly when you need to start thinking about it and one interesting thing that i read in one of your columns was um divorce equals failure and you said just because people are together for their entire lives does not necessarily mean it's yes. a secure happy success relationship absolutely they could have been miserable for the last 30 years mm -hmm. so how can you get those 30 years back you can not sometimes exactly. you have to make this very difficult decision mm -hmm. um, once we do how do yes. we move on what are those steps of recovery right well first off once you've got everything settled in terms of legal and the logistics of who's gonna live where and all of that that's when the healing process can really start right. Um, the first thing that's really, really important is to think of divorce as like any other loss, um, a death yeah. or something like that. It's a very serious situation and you will have a lot of pain when going through that loss. No doubt. Um, and so grieving is a very important part of the uh, healing process. Um, you have to feel it and unfortunately, you know, if we just um, push it aside and try to go on with our lives, jump right back into dating, distract ourselves, then it will eventually come back and hit you like a lot harder later down the road. But how do you road. heal? Do you have to find, you have to find your own way? Um, well, there's, I mean, it really does depend on the person, but there's different steps that I find are really useful. Um, once you've kind of gone through the grieving process, then the next thing that you need to do is find acceptance in the situation you're in right now. It may not be what you wanted, but you have to accept that this is your life, that That's this it. is who you are. Let's move on. Exactly. Buddy, and acceptance is the first thing that you need to do to be able to heal, because if you are like, always in denial that this is the situation you're in, then you'll never be able to right. heal. So that's a very important, very important. And I step. and I and I read that too somewhere. Um, a lot of people kind of deny it. They trick their brains into yes. thinking, "I can make it better. I can fix it. He will do this. She mm -hmm. will do this." And that's generally no. not the case. No. Right. Definitely. All right. So after acceptance, what do we have? Um, I think having a strong support system is really, really important. Yeah. Um, if it's not something that you can have between friends and family, then there's always therapists, there's the Huffington post-divorce section, things like that. But a support system is very important because you want to feel that there are other people that have made it through this successfully. And that's, that's the key, I, for mm -hmm. me anyways. I always say to myself, I'm not the only one going through this, whatever it is, divorce, uh, parenting, yes. I'm not the only one who's having a two-year-old with tantrums, you <laughs> yes, know, exactly. and, it, and it does lighten yes. the load a little bit. I'm not mm -hmm. alone. Um, what about, what's next? 
Um, I think it's really important if you, especially if you're younger, like I was, um, to figure out who you are as a person. A okay. lot of people, when they're coming out of a marriage, it's very difficult because your whole life has been about up to this point you a we him. exactly yeah. we had goals we had thoughts we had plans and so now it's very important to figure out who you are independently of your partner but that's not even just if you're young you've yeah, changed you, you if you're changed. 50 60 you've got to find that mm -hmm. new you absolutely sorry go on what did you do eat pray love <laughs> I did do a bit of that <laughs> yes but um so that's very important to figure out who you are and like Find out what you want in your life yeah. and what your goals are. What makes you tick. Exactly. That's a very important and step And so well. I want to hear your experience, Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> so I actually solo traveled for a year. Wow. Yeah. So I went mostly around Southeast Asia. Um, so I went to um, Bali. I went to Thailand, Cambodia, Spain. Um, so not very attractive landscapes. No, you not chose. at all. <laughs> it was <laughs> freezing cold all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. Good yeah. for you. So it was amazing. It was an amazing experience and it helped me learn a lot about myself and travel was hugely empowering for me. And so that was also really, really helpful because it made me feel like if I can travel on my own for a year, then you know what? I can do anything right. within life by yeah, myself. Yeah, it's, it's scary. New countries, yeah. language barriers, Absolutely. what have you. Those definitely are a little bit more commercialized. They do have English speaking yes. um, parts. But um, And I guess if, if you've got children, you've got to think of, of something of else, just mm -hmm. something personal to you to help you rediscover you. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, what's up next? Um, after that, I think it's also really important uh, for you to find happiness. So, yeah. I mean, happiness is something that, yes, you can get temporary happiness from something external, like, you know, a new job or a new car. But it's really important to find what makes you happy, truly happy. So that's typically going to come from within. Um, so at that point, trying to figure out, like, what your passion is um, and what makes you happy is going to be really important because you want to focus on finding those things and integrating them into your life as much as possible because you need to have as many positives as you can. Definitely. And then the last thing that I think you might suggest yeah. is... Um, well, the, I think the, one of the most important things um, is forgiveness. How do you do that? Dependent on the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yours sounds like it was amicable, so yes, it was a absolutely. little easier, but mm -hmm. some people, that's a hard one. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean that you're saying that what they did to you or what you did to them is all right. Okay. But no matter what, no matter what the situation is, and it will be hard, but forgiveness is absolutely important. Yeah. Because if you do not forgive, if you hold that like anger or resentment or frustration inside, then you're not going to eventually be able to heal and move on. You need to forgive, you need to accept that this is over, this is life, and you know, forgive and then on. start moving on. Which is a lot easier said than done, Absolutely. but necessary. Okay, we are looking at a second chance at love right after this. Stay with us.